Let's do something interesting today. Today, we're going to talk about hoop houses or Quonset huts, in particular the commercial ones that people use to grow plants to make money. So what is a hoop house? Well, a hoop house is the simplest greenhouse you can probably get. All it is is taking some steel or PVC tube or some sort of material that you can bend into a half circle, stick into the ground and cover it with plastic. It, it doesn't get any simpler than that for a hoop house. Where it gets complicated is when you start attaching them together with a gutter connect to give yourself a large area that's under plastic. Hoop houses primarily are covered by polyplastic. Very few hoop houses will use uh, glass and very few will use polycarbonate. Although some will use polycarbonate on the ends. So today we're going to talk about commercial hoop houses, what's in them and how they work. Simple Tech, that's the name of this channel. And we have piles of other videos on greenhouses and growing that you can check out after you look at this one. In particular, we have videos on cooling. We have videos on heating and multiple types of cooling and heating systems that you should really investigate before going full bore into the greenhouse business because greenhouses heat up and you gotta cool them down. And in the winter, if you're in a northern climate, greenhouses get cold. So if you can figure out how to cheaply keep heat in it, you're gonna keep growing into later in the season or start much earlier in the season. And this gives you an advantage over everyone else. So if you get a chance, hit that like, hit that subscribe button, because this is the channel where you learn about greenhouses. Okay, hoop houses or Quonset huts. What's required for a foundation? Foundations in hoop houses are rare. Most of the time, you're gonna have a hoop house stuck into the ground. They're just gonna take the bended steel where it goes around in a line and comes straight down and pound those into the ground. That's gonna give it its stability. So often a hoop house is pounded in three or four feet into the ground. If you try and move a stake that's three or four feet into the ground, you're gonna have some difficulty, especially if it's made out of a good material. Now the PVC ones will use a heavier PVC when they pound into the ground. Steel ones will use a little heavier gauge steel and connect the two inside. That being said, that's your foundation. Now it is possible to pour a foundation or add gravel for a hoop house, but most hoop houses grow directly in the ground. So framing, when you're putting together a hoop house, the most common material is metal. You're going to see them out of aluminum. You're going to see them out of steel. And there's actually some really cool bending kits you can get so that you can just buy straight steel and bend it to the right and correct angle it, so that you can stretch your poly over top of it. And the beauty of this is the longer the piece of material you have, the less breaks there's going to be. So there's less chance of the poly catching on that and actually tearing. So where you do have breaks, where two pieces of steel or two pieces of PVC go together, you don't just want to have to necessarily sand it down, but you want to cover it with some sort of tape, duct tape or something in particular, fairly heavily, so that your plastic can slide over it easily. Tearing is an issue. You don't want that to happen. That's one part of what's necessary in the frame. The second part is what's called a purlin. And these are just straight lines of either metal or PVC or whatever material you're building it out of but they add structure to your greenhouse. And a hoop house without purlins is not gonna be very strong. Purlins add an enormous amount of strength to a hoop house. So those are the two things you wanna look at. Then there's the end walls. And the end walls are often built out of wood and covered with, you can cover them with poly or you can cover them with um, anything you want. They don't necessarily have to be transparent. The end walls can be covered with polycarbonate or they can be covered with a tarp that's non-see-through, because if you're looking at an extremely long hoop house, you're not losing that much on the ends, and you're gonna have some material that you're gonna wanna store in it, whether it's rakes or uh, some sort of handheld machinery that you're gonna need to deal with the plants in the greenhouse. That has to be stored somewhere, so why not have it in a shady area of the greenhouse? Of course, the last major component to building a hoop house is the covering. 
you need a transparent cover and depending on what you're growing with the hoop house you're going to have either a single or a double layer covering now the majority of the hoop houses out there are probably a single layer covering that you're going to see these work but understand that in a high wind you can have problems i've seen more hoop houses torn down by high winds than i can count and what happens is when you go to a double inflated poly at that point the poly gains an enormous amount of strength in the wind it acts like a big cushion with the wind banging against it and a double inflated poly hoop house can withstand winds that a single layer poly hoop house can't so that's something to really consider when you're putting your hoop house up is maybe budget a few dollars for a blower fan and a double layer of poly or two sets of of plastic that go over your greenhouse so that you can have an air barrier that will act as a cushion against the wind and act as insulation to keep your greenhouse warmer. Hoop houses get a lot of sun and that doesn't matter whether you orientate the building north, south or east, west. They're just going to heat up. They're even going to heat up in the fall and in the spring and even in the winter if you're running a four season greenhouse to the point where you need to consider some sort of cooling system for your hoop house or Quonset hut. Now, the most common cooling system that you're gonna look at for a hoop house is roll up sides. The majority of these are manual, though you can get them automated. Roll up sides, if you roll up both sides, will put a lot of air through your hoop house. The one problem is that hot air rises and you can still catch a lot of the hot air on the top of the hoop house. So the solution to that is, of course, to add vents on the ends. And depending on how long your greenhouse is, you can either add vents or you can add vents with fans on them that will push a lot more air through. Now, the next stage um, is, of course, adding an active cooling system, something like a swamp cooler or an evaporative cooler on one side of your greenhouse. So you're going to draw the air in with a fan through a sponge that is going to evaporate water and with the phase change cool your greenhouse even more than the ambient temperature so it acts like air conditioning now you could actually use an air conditioner but you're going to go broke with the electrical cost a swamp cooler if you have access to some water and you have a low humidity situation is going to work for you and cool your greenhouse a lot more than not using it greenhouses will hold a little bit of heat but if you really want to get into the colder seasons, you got to add heat to your greenhouse. And that's true for a hoop house or Quonset hut, as well as it is for almost any other type of greenhouse. So if you're going to add heat to a hoop house, I would recommend looking at the most affordable heat for your area. Now, the cost of heat in different areas, the materials that you're going to use to heat it will vary. In some places, wood might be more efficient and other places propane or natural gas especially in commercial greenhouses natural gas seems to be the fallback number one choice there's also electricity um, and there's other things that you can use to heat your greenhouse there's the possibility of a compost pile or animal heat other things that we actually have videos on that you can check out on this channel to heat your greenhouse but if you're going to go into spring and fall and possibly winter with your hoop house you're going to need to add heat whether it's solar, whether it's wood, whether it's natural gas or any of a number of other systems, it's something you have to do and you have to consider. We have piles of videos on this, so you want to check out our other videos if you want to get into this topic in more depth. Insulation is probably one of the most overlooked things in a hoop house. And if you're doing a commercial hoop house operation, insulation is something you really need to consider, especially if you want to start earlier in the spring, go later in the fall, or possibly even go through the winter in a colder climate. So the first aspect of insulation is I would suggest doing a double layer poly. Don't go with single. Single layer poly is a 0.01 R factor and a double layer poly, you're looking at about an R2 to an R2 and a half. That's enormous in difference. So that works and it's something to really really add for not a lot of money the second part of insulating a hoop house is to insulate the north wall if you set it up with a solar greenhouse orientation so that you're taking advantage of the south sun all day long as the sun goes over the sky if you were to take four by eight sheets of insulation three or four inches thick and stuff them across or in behind 
the hoops and the plastic, you're going to suddenly go from an R2 to an R20. And that's huge. This is going to cut your heating cost in half or in a quarter or even more. That's what insulation does. The next major step you can take with insulation, of course, is a blanket. You can do like the Chinese greenhouses do. And if you have your north wall insulated, you only need half a blanket that you can roll up and roll down to change your transparent area of the greenhouse from an R2 to possibly an R7 or an R8. Well, now you need even less heat to keep this greenhouse warm at night. And if you're growing something like tomatoes, you only need an 8 to 10 degrees Celsius to make them happy. The final thing you can look at for insulation with a hoop house is the floor. If you were to add three or four inches of styrofoam or aircrete insulation to the floor, and then maybe put some sand and add some PEX in it for radiant heat flooring, and then add concrete blocks or pour concrete, you've now insulated an enormous amount of area that normally would suck heat out of your greenhouse that is now insulated to possibly an R20 or better. And if it's a radiant floor, it's even going to bring heat up at the most efficient heat transfer option possible. So insulation with a hoop house, yes. You're going to get deeper into your seasons and you're going to get longer into your seasons and you might even be able to go four seasons if you insulate your hoop house. The last part about hoop houses is how do you grow the food that's in them? So there's basically two choices you got. You're either going to grow it in the ground or you're going to grow it above the ground in pots or in hydroponic type tubes or something of that nature. Which one is better? Good question. That depends on your market and what you know how to grow, where you live and how it's working. So exactly how you operate the growing in your greenhouse is more of a personal choice or a choice that's determined by what's most economically available and affordable in the area that you live. So I hope this explanation of hoop houses, our Quonset huts, and how to heat and insulate and cool them helps you in your choice of looking for a hoop house to grow some food and make some money with.